Hey there, friends. I know I don't usually do an intro to glitch videos beyond the normal, but I wanted to pop in here and say a few things. First off, this is the 100th glitch episode, and as such, is going to be longer than normal. About an hour at length. Um, I recorded all this today, and let me tell you, my throat is doing some weird stuff now, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, yay, 100 episodes. And we're gonna keep going, don't worry, there'll be plenty more. We'll hit 200 someday and celebrate then too. The other thing I wanted to celebrate. We hit 11,000 subscribers on the channel. Back whenever I hit 1,000, I did what's known as an Ask Me Anything. I had people send me questions, I answered them in audio, and then I put it in a video on the channel. I'm doing that again. And this time, if you send me a question, you enter to win a free As the Raven Dreams t-shirt. Now, to enter, you have to go down to the description below and go to the link that says asthereavendreams.com slash 2022 AMA, or just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button at the top of the screen that says 2022 AMA. It's a very basic form. You'd have to fill out just your name, an email address so I can contact you, a backup email, not required, and then your question. And that's all you have to give me. I will answer almost any questions. I think you know what questions not to ask. Keep them appropriate, please. I know you guys will, though. But hey, if you have anything you want to ask me about anything, now is your time to do so. This video comes out in December, the AMA video. So you have several months, but the more questions I have, the more I have to answer, right? So I say you should do it, just saying. And yeah, at this point, I'm going to stop talking and let you guys listen to this wonderful Glitch in the Matrix collection, the 100th Glitch in the Matrix collection on this channel. So my friends, enjoy. I heard a story on your channel recently about a person that found an item in a box that it couldn't have been put in. I think it was a top or something that they found in a sealed box, and it made me remember something that happened to me back when I was younger. At the time, I thought it was just a weird thing and moved on, but now I realize that this was actually a glitch in the Matrix. It actually happened whenever I was 18 and was moving out of my parents' house and into a dormitory. Because I was 18, I was super strict on how my stuff was packed. Because it was my stuff, and it was pretty much all that I had to my name at the time. I kept things in their own boxes, books, CDs, clothing. Everything had its place, and there was a place for everything. I know, it sounds a bit OCD, and maybe it was, but that's me. Because I had everything in its own place, I packed every single thing that I owned. Neither my mom nor my dad had packed anything in my room. I made sure of it. One of the boxes that I packed was full of the things that were on and in my bedside table, which is where I kept everything that I could that was important to me. One of the items in this box was a necklace that my grandmother had given to me. It was a fairly large pendant that was shaped like a sunflower. It was quite literally my prized possession from when I was young because it was the last thing my grandmother had given to me for my birthday. I know I'm repeating things to some extent, but this was my prized possession. Nothing I owned was more important than this necklace, and I would never do something with it that would put it somewhere that wasn't easily accessible for me. So, I know for a fact that I had put it in this box, because it was a small box that I had sealed with packing tape, and then a strip of duct tape and wrote IMPORTANT on it in all caps with black sharpie. However, when I got to my dorm and started unpacking, the necklace was not in the box. There was no way that it was opened, as it would have been obvious and the person would have had to have removed the duct tape from the cardboard, cut or removed the packing tape, removed said necklace, and then retaped it with all of the same tape. That's not something that is easily done, and why would you do it in the first place? To add to the weirdness, the necklace was gone for about three months. 
I was incredibly upset about the fact that it disappeared, but then one day I got a call from my mom telling me that she had found it. I was ecstatic, and I asked her where she found it. She then tells me that she found it in their bathroom, in the drawer on the sink, where my dad kept all of his shaving stuff. I have no idea how or why it would have ever been put in the drawer that only my dad would have been in, and he had no idea how it got there either. He never packed anything in my room. I remember specifically putting the necklace in the box, and the grandmother that gave it to me was his mother, so he knew how important that necklace was to me. So that's my glitch. I know it's not as weird as some, but it was super freaky to me. I was so upset for those few months, but I am glad that the Matrix decided to give it back to me. I have no idea how it happened or why it happened, but it did. And now I get to tell this crazy story to people. I honestly never thought that I would have a story like this to tell. I always knew glitches were a thing that people experienced, but had never looked into other people's experiences until this event happened to me. Luckily, I stumbled across your podcast, but I'm still at a total loss as to what happened. Okay, some quick context. I'm a 28-year-old female who works in a very large hospital. My job is super simple, and probably one of the easiest in the hospital. I keep track of visitors as they come in with heart surgery patients. I'm supposed to check them in as they come into the waiting room and then take them back to recovery when the patient is out of the OR. However, with COVID, my job has went from slow to mind-numbingly boring. I used to put patient families in consult rooms for the doctors to give updates after surgery. I would make coffee, give locker combinations for large families with a lot of items that they brought in with them. However, now we have a limit of one visitor per patient, and the doctor calls the visitor's phones after surgery, and then the recovery nurse calls them directly when they are ready for them in recovery giving them directions to make it back without needing guided. This means that people just opt to go back out to their car and wait most of the time, except on extremely hot or cold days. My job feels seemingly pointless a lot of the times, as I only get the occasional old person who doesn't have a cell phone, or person without a car, so at maximum, I get four people waiting inside a day. About a month ago, I was alone at my desk as I am most days, playing on my phone and listening to a true crime podcast through my earpods. At almost 9.30am, I had only seen a handful of people in my almost three hours of being at work, most of which had been lost or turned around while looking for a clinical appointment. I decide to grab my bagel out of the fridge, and I head down to the cafeteria to use their toaster. As I'm on my way back to my desk, I feel my tummy grumble, so I quickly sit the container on my desk and make my way to the restroom. Now this is where it gets weird. I couldn't have been in the bathroom for more than five minutes. My mind was on my bagel as I was starving. I walk out of the bathroom and experience what I can only describe as a real-life lag. I felt myself step through the threshold of the bathroom into the hallway, but suddenly I'm back in the bathroom taking that final step out of the bathroom into the hallway yet again. I stand there for a second kind of thrown off as I felt weird. Suddenly my stomach feels empty and instead of hunger, it now feels uneasy and nervous. I make my way back to my desk, grab the cream cheese out of the mini-fridge, and I sit down trying to shake the weird feeling that something was off. 
I opened the container, expecting a, for lack of better words, moist yet warm bagel, as it had been sealed in a plastic container after having been toasted. I'm surprised when, although the container had obvious condensation in it, the bagel was cold. I shake my mouse on my computer to get rid of the screensaver, and I glance at the time as I log back into the system. I had expected to be logged out as I was inactive for more than five minutes. However, when I look at the clock in the corner of the screen, it reads 2.50pm. I somehow lost five hours within what felt like no more than ten minutes. The bad part is, I don't think anyone even realized I was gone, as, like I said, my job was kind of pointless at the moment. I checked the waiting room, and I see a couple of people I didn't recognize in seats, and two people that had checked in with me previously were already gone. My phone had the usual notifications as my husband sent me TikToks while on his lunch, and my mom, who was babysitting my daughter, had sent me a couple of pictures of their outing to the park. Everything was seemingly normal, but it was as if I had just popped out of reality for five hours and returned without a single soul noticing I was gone. I also went back into the same bathroom, making sure there wasn't any weird smells, thinking maybe I had passed out from a gas leak or something. I really don't know, and I cannot come to any logical explanation as to how I seemingly lost five hours of my day. My husband says that maybe I was abducted by aliens, since they could tell that I had a pointless job. However, he's just salty that he makes less while working out in the elements all day. On the plus side though, at least I still got paid for it. At the beginning of the pandemic, when testing was still being rationed, I developed symptoms. The protocol in my area was to isolate for 10 days unless you needed to go to the ER, so I had friends deliver groceries outside my door and prepared to wait my time out. My symptoms were mild, and after a few days, I looked for a project to keep me occupied. I decided to wallpaper my living room. I already had all of my supplies and removed them and my tools from the hall closet they were stored in. I put down a canvas, like a good contractor, and laid my tools out on it neatly. Before I go further, I lived in a large apartment. No basement, no attic, no roommates. No neighbors with keys. One elderly and frail cat who, even in her youth, did not drag objects around. It was in a rather bad area, so my windows, door, and patio doors were barred. The main door was literally barricaded with a 2 by 6 piece of wood. I didn't leave and no one could enter without me removing the barricade. I laid out my materials on a canvas before bedtime, ready to use in the morning. When I was ready to start, I noticed my float-slash-smoother was missing. It was made of styrofoam and about two feet long, with short, soft bristles on one side for smoothing the paper down. So, it is very light, but it's not a small object. I immediately went to where it was originally stored, which was on an upper shelf in the closet. I climbed up on a ladder and used a flashlight. Nothing. I looked all over my apartment. Nothing. This really bothered me. I rarely lose things, so I did an intensive search of my apartment, each room top to bottom and left to right. I looked on my balcony and in the garbage. The only thing I could think of was that I woke up during the night and did something with it. I should mention, no ambient or alcohol or substances, no history of psychotic breaks or delusions, I wasn't anxious. I was actually enjoying my alone time. Because I was locked in my apartment and this puzzled me, I kept looking for it. For three days, I repeated my grid search, 
looking in all closets, under beds, everywhere. Behind the toilet, the top of the kitchen cupboards, it was as if I was on an easter egg hunt. I was obsessed. Had I been sicker than I thought? Delirious? I didn't need this thing to do my task. I found a big sponge and a white scraper and I used them instead. So the wallpaper went up regardless. But it bothered me so much. Enough that at one point I addressed the air and said, This isn't funny anymore. Bring it back. On the fourth day, I repeated the search. I got up on a ladder. I looked on the top shelf of the hall closet. And there it was. Right where it had always been stored. But not where I had left it. Nothing ever went missing this way again, and I have no explanation that doesn't involve me completely cracking up and playing the world's weirdest practical joke on myself. Okay, so I actually have two glitches which involve her. This is the first, and I'll edit in the next if anyone wants. The first glitch? This happened about eight weeks ago. It was past bedtime, and I could hear her awake in her bedroom, which she shares with her four-year-old brother. This is not unusual, and they're really cute when they play and chat at night, so no big deal, right? I walked up the stairs, and I can hear their little chatting and giggling, so I decide to pop in and see if they need anything, and to remind them that it's sleep time. I stepped over the safety gate, so I was inside their bedroom, but only about one step inside. The hall light was on, and it lit up their bedroom. My son is in the left bed, and my daughter is in the right. I say something like, What are you two up to? And they sheepishly tell me that they're playing. My eyes adjust, and I can see my son in his bed and my daughter in hers. I can see them moving and getting comfortable as we chat. The light's low, but enough to see the shapes of them, the reflection in their eyes, and their bedroom floor, which is a narrow gap between their beds. It's a small English council house. We chat for about three minutes, and I ask them if they need anything. I clearly hear my daughter's voice answering me from her bed. As we're talking, I feel something brush the back of my leg. I didn't even look to check because we have cats and those little devils follow me everywhere. One must have jumped over the safety gate and was coming in to see if anything interesting was going on. Something felt a bit weird, though, and after maybe five seconds, I realized I hadn't heard the gate rattle as it always does when the cats jump over it. The little cheeky fur demon must have snuck in when I put them to bed, and that is probably why the kids are awake and giggling. I turn and look at the small gap behind me, expecting to see a little black cat, and I kid you not, my two-year-old daughter is stood there. I am so shocked, and I say to her, How did you get there? And that little girl just starts giggling her little butt off. Like, hysterical giggling. I start nervously laughing. I say, you were just in bed. Did you just teleport, little miss? And we all start laughing. I'm persistent and ask a few more times, how did you get behind me? But she doesn't answer me. She just keeps giggling sweetly. I ask her brother, how did she do that? And he carries on laughing. I even say, what is going on here? What are we all laughing about? But neither can answer, and I'm baffled. After a minute or two, I say something like, All right, super baby, let's get back in bed. I tuck them back in and close the door behind me. I'm totally freaked out. Not scared or anything, just utter confusion. It felt like I had just looked up and the sky was green. Now... I'd been looking at her in her bed. I was talking to her. I could hear her voice coming from her bed. I did not see her get out of bed. I did not see her walk towards me, down the thin strip of floor space. 
and I did not hear her footsteps on the floor. She didn't make a peep of noise. It was like she just disappeared. I told my partner, and together we tried to figure it out, but it felt like something impossible had happened. Eventually, he just said, Glitch? And, well, here I am. I posted an experience earlier involving my daughter, and as promised, here is the second glitch involving her. If you remember the layout of the bedroom, there are two beds parallel to each other with a narrow gap in between. At the head of their beds is a window which overlooks the back garden. This happened not long after the first event, maybe 10 to 20 days after. It was close enough that the moment it happened, I instantly thought, not again, in a kind of acceptance way. It was long past bedtime for them, probably just after midnight. They had gone to bed on time, and I hadn't heard a peep from them. I let my dog into the back garden to do her thing, and I started walking down my garden to a chair we have at the far end. It was dark by this time, but the moon was out, so I could see well enough. I got halfway down the garden, and I turned to look at my house and instinctively looked up at their window. The light of the moon was hitting the window in a way which made the glass look kind of white, even though their blinds were closed. But I didn't just see the blinds in the window. I saw my daughter's silhouette stood on the windowsill. I can remember it as clear as anything, like a flashbulb memory. It was a completely black silhouette, her size, her shape, hands up to the glass, and I couldn't make out any details or features. I recognized it was my daughter because of the size, but at this point, I just knew there was a kid up at the window and I ran like hell upstairs. I rushed into their room and flicked the main light on right away. I had already started talking and blurted out a word like, Hey, about to ask her what on earth she was doing, but I stopped in my tracks. Both kids were in their beds. I figured she jumped out quickly and was pretending to sleep. I actually walked up to her and tried talking again, but this kid was fast asleep. If you've ever seen a young child in deep sleep, it isn't something they could fake. Slightly sweating, pink cheeks, sprawled out like a dead weight. I'm so shocked at this point, because I am certain of what I saw. I checked my son, even though I know it couldn't logically have been him, but he's sleeping deeply too. I just back out of their room feeling pretty flabbergasted. This time I definitely got creeped out a bit, along with the familiar confusion and disbelief. I went back outside and checked. The window was lit up in the same way, only no weird toddler figure looking back at me. I started learning about glitches and other things after an incident with my cat. The story has always been in the back of my mind, and more so once I learned what a glitch in the Matrix was. But I'm not 100% sure it qualifies, or is anything more than misremembering, but I'll let you be the judge. A little insight into my life growing up. Growing up in Maine in the 80s, my family and I would go camping every summer. It was my parents, myself, my two sisters, and a few other families that my parents were good friends with who all had kids. We would usually go camping a few times a year, and it was one of these camping trips that something happened that, to this day, no one can give me answers for. I had just turned six a few weeks before this camping trip, and for my birthday, I had gotten this really special sweatshirt. To this day, I just turned 39 last month, I can still 
picture this shirt. It was special to me because it was reversible. It was blue on one side and pink on the other, with penguins on both sides. The weeks leading up to this trip, it took an act of Congress to get me out of it, so that my mom could wash it. So here's what happened, and I honestly think if it wasn't for my love for that sweatshirt, I probably wouldn't have remembered any of this. We had been at the campsite for a day already, and it was coming up on our second night there. I'd say it was around 8pm because it was getting dark. I remember that this campground was different than any of the others we had stayed at, because they had these strange platform areas that you would set your tent up on. They were either a raised wooden or concrete platform, and I don't know why, but I feel like the platform that the tent was on played the role in how I got hurt. I was wearing my new sweatshirt, blue side out. But this is where things get hazy. I remember my favorite shirt was covered in my blood. I remember my dad having to cut it off of me as my mom went to get help. And that's it. I know you may think, okay, so what? But I've brought this up to my parents. They remember that camping trip. They even remember me getting hurt, but they don't remember anything else. The amount of blood on my shirt was a lot, and I remember my dad had to cut the shirt off to see how bad my injury was, but I have no scars. They can't explain where my shirt went. They don't recall anything past the point where my memory gets hazy. Those camping trips were well documented. My mom always took pictures of everything. Except there are no pictures taken that night of that trip, and my mom has even said that she vaguely remembers taking many pictures the following two days that we were there, but can't explain why they're not in the scrapbook from that year. I've always gotten this knot in my stomach when I think about that night. I know that something bad happened to me, and maybe my parents are lying. Maybe something bad did happen and I blocked it out. But it just feels like there's something more to it. And maybe it's all my glitch research that I started doing after a recent incident, and that's why I'm thinking that's what happened. That I died that night, and ended up in a different reality. But going through all the scrapbooks from before that time to all the years after, everything seemed different. I started writing down memories that I had since before my sixth birthday, like friends in school, outfits I wore on first days of school, and trips we took, and with who. And the things I remember are not the same as the pictures my mom has of those times. Like, the outfit I supposedly wore on the first day of kindergarten, I 100% remember that day and the picture my mom took and showed me a week or two later after the film was developed. I was wearing tan corduroys and a pink turtleneck with a sunflower on it. But the actual picture my mom has of my first day of kindergarten, I'm wearing jeans, a matching jean jacket, and a white shirt, all of which had the Disney character Bambi on them. And no, I did not wear the corduroys and turtleneck in any other photos, school or otherwise. There are so many things that I've seen in pictures that are not how I remember them. Yet, everything in pictures taken after my favorite penguin shirt was ruined is 100% of things that I can remember. It just doesn't make sense. And part of me wishes that I had never heard of glitches, because it hurts my brain trying to figure out what could have happened that night. I have a bit of a weird story that actually happened to me this last week. And my husband was a witness to the whole thing, mostly because what I thought happened was his doing. It was the middle of the week, and usually around then my husband and I will struggle to decide what to have for dinner. Typically by Thursday we're ordering pizza because we're both tired, 
and both ready for it to be the weekend. So cooking just isn't something that we think about. The night before this happened, he and I were thinking about what to have for dinner, and he mentioned that he moved some chicken from the freezer to the fridge, and that he would come up with something in the morning for us to have. I want to note that he did not tell me what he was planning on making. He didn't even hint what he wanted to make. That morning, he actually woke up late and he had to make a mad dash out the door so he would get to his job on time. Because of this, we didn't get to talk about what to make for dinner at all, and I was guessing that we were going to end up getting pizza or Chinese. Then, I came down the stairs and I noticed that, on the counter, was a can of chili beans and a post-it note that said, Chili. My guess was that he left them out so that I knew that he wanted me to make chili with the chicken, which I had actually done in the slow cooker several times in the past. I got the slow cooker out, put the chicken in it, the beans, the seasoning, mixed it all up, and then set the heat and put the lid on it. By the time I got the lid on it, I went to get dressed so that I could get out to work as well. About a minute or so later, I got a text message from him saying, Hey, I think we have the stuff to make chicken chili. Would you have enough time to get that set up before you leave? I was a bit curious about the text, but at the same time, I figured that he may have just sent it to reinforce that he needed me to do it. I responded with, Yeah, I saw your note. I already got it ready. And then he responded with, What note? We went back and forth for a while, and my husband was adamant that he never left a note, and he hadn't gotten out the beans because he didn't have the time to do so. When we got home, I tried to find the note that was left, but I couldn't find it. I had left it on the counter when I left for work, but it was not there when I got home. I tried to tell him that when I had gotten downstairs, there was a can of beans and a note that said chili that I thought that he had left for me. But again, he told me several times that he did not have the time to get anything ready at all, and that when he left, he barely had a minute before he was supposed to clock in. Neither of us have any idea how the beans and the note got there, nor where the hell the note went, but I'm convinced that something was telling me what to make for dinner before my husband had the idea. It was just one of those weird situations that I guess we'll never find an answer for, but oh well. At least the chili was really good. I have lived in a medium-sized city, population of about 300,000, in Finland all my life. Like most cities all around the world, my city has legends about weird phenomena that happen around the city. But the most notorious, most frequent, and the most documented one is the doppelgangers in certain areas. I'm going to refer to these areas as Area F and Area G. Area F is located very close to the city center, and Area G about 5 kilometers, or 3 miles, from the city. Both areas have lots of affordable apartments, so the areas are a bit restless. Many people, including the few of my family members and myself, have come across someone they know from Area F or G. The weird thing is, those people you've met haven't been anywhere near that area at the time. These encounters always seem to have these things in common. The person is someone you know very well. A family member, close colleague, friend. It's always either the Area F or the Area G, they don't seem to notice you, even though you would try to wave or say hi, and, well, they haven't really been there. Sure, they could be just avoiding you and don't want to tell why they were there, but so many people have had these encounters that it's definitely weird. 
often it's been proved that the person you have seen couldn't have been there. They were out of town and can prove it, or something like that. My experience. My now fiancé and I were moving in together in the summer of 2020, and he lived in a studio in the area G. We were picking some stuff up from his old apartment, and were driving slow, like 20 kilometers per hour, on a quiet road. I looked out of the window and saw my friend's boyfriend talking to a woman. It was definitely him. Same face, same height, same build, all that. I got a good glance of him since we were driving so slowly, so it wasn't like we just quickly drove past him. My fiancé saw him and recognized him too, but couldn't double-check because he was driving. The whole thing was strange since my friend and the boyfriend in question live in a city which is 600 kilometers, around 372 miles, south of my city. Sure, he could be visiting our city to meet his friends, and that was my initial thought, so I decided to ask my friend. My friend was utterly confused, because her boyfriend was visiting his family 300 kilometers north from our city. You can probably guess why she was upset, thinking maybe he was cheating or something like that. She called her boyfriend to explain himself, and he went above and beyond to prove that he was where he was supposed to be. They video called, and the boyfriend showed her around his dad's house that she immediately recognized. My friend, myself, and my fiancé have tried to explain the incident many times, and of course the only logical explanation is that the guy we saw just happened to look very much like my friend's boyfriend. I've known both of them for eight years, and I definitely know what he looks like. What makes the whole ordeal weirder is that similar encounters are super common here. So common that the phenomenon has a name. Area G and Area F's doppelgangers. I've been reading about other people's experiences, and have noticed another thing in common. The doppelgangers actually live or have lived in my city, and they have definitely been in the Area F or Area G at some point. My friend's boyfriend used to have many friends who lived in Area G, so he definitely has been there over the years. I didn't know this, but like I said, most locals have been there at least a couple of times at some point. So, I don't know. Maybe time-space complexity has glitches in the area, and people see someone they know from another time? Have any of you experienced anything similar? About a month ago, me and my wife decided to organize our garage and get some shelves put up so we could get stuff off the garage floor and make more room. We went to Lowe's, the hardware store for non-US readers, to get the shelves, brackets, and screws that we needed to do the project. While getting the brackets to hold the shelf boards on the wall, we distinctly remember counting nine brackets, because the first box only had six in it, and we had to get three more out of the box behind it for the total of nine brackets. So we finished getting everything, including the three eight-foot-long heavy-ass shelf boards, and go to checkout. We are doing the self-checkout, and we count the brackets again, and there are nine in the cart, so we scan one, place it back in the cart with the others, and are working on setting the quantity to nine on the self-checkout machine when one of the workers comes up and does it for us. We tell her we have nine of them. Once we get out of the store, load everything, and get back home, we start working on putting them up, and made sure we once again had the nine brackets to hold the shelf boards. While putting up the first shelf, I had one of the brackets in my hand and went to look for some washers, as the screw heads were just slightly small enough that it could slip through the hole in the bracket, and I remember holding on to the bracket in my hand. Then I set it down with the other brackets, 
and walked not ten steps away to get the washers as were in the garage with all the tools. And the hardware. Coming back and we start putting the brackets up. So, we get to the last shelf and my wife goes, Uh, we have a problem. We're missing a bracket. I looked at her with a confused look and said, How? We got nine from the store, and we had nine at checkout, and we had nine when we started putting them up. Is there one still in the vehicle, maybe, and we miscounted? We checked the vehicle, and nothing. No bracket. So, now we're even more confused, and I remember I had that one in my hand and set it down with the brackets when I went to get the washers. Maybe I set it down somewhere else, and I thought I set it with the other brackets... So we start searching over the whole garage. And, mind you, we have moved everything out of the garage to have room to work on the shelves. And we cannot find it. We checked in my toolbox, on the shelves we had already put up. We checked inside our house. We checked the vehicle four to five times. We looked everywhere in the garage and could not find it. To this day... We still don't know where the missing bracket went. It hasn't turned up anywhere, even though we made sure we had nine before leaving the store. And even at checkout, we counted again and had nine. Only for one to disappear somehow. I have a short and really strange story that happened to me and my best buddy a few years ago. It's one of those things that we can explain to some extent, in that we can tell people what happened, but we have no damn clue what actually occurred. On this night, my buddy and I were going to a local baseball game. I won't say the team because it'll give away my hometown, but it's not one that typically performs well. Not that that's relevant. Anyways, we had a good time at the game, and we had quite a few drinks because we were losing. Bad. Despite this, we were not drunk. At least, I wasn't drunk. I was definitely a bit tipsy, but I don't ever drink enough to actually get wasted. But, because we were drinking, we had paid for a hotel room for us to crash in for the night before we went to the game, so we had somewhere to go. We got an Uber to the hotel, but before we went in, my buddy mentioned that he was desperately craving a Reese's. I laughed at him like, Bro, why didn't we just take the Uber to a gas station or something? And he just shrugged and told me that we needed to go get a Reese's before we went to bed. I again was laughing at him, but said, Screw it and pointed down the way to where there was a convenience store. We went to the store, and we got our Reese's, and then we started back to the hotel. And that's when the glitch happened. We walked out of the convenience store, and he stopped to open his candy, and it looked like the sky went from pitch black to as bright as the middle of the day for about half a second. It was as if someone had flicked the switch on to the sky for just a moment, and then immediately flicked it back off. Like, it went from black to bright blue back to black. It was the weirdest thing, but we both just kind of stood there for a moment and stared at the sky. I'm sure we looked like we were out of our minds just staring upwards. When it happened, we both completely sobered up. Like, 100% completely went from a bit tipsy to completely sober. It was super weird, and neither of us said anything to the other person, though we knew that we both saw it happen. We just walked back to the hotel and didn't say a single word. The next morning, I tried to bring it up, but he was pretty much just dismissive of it, saying, yeah, it was weird. That was it. To the best of my knowledge, the two of us are the only ones that saw it happen, and there's no way to explain it beyond what I said earlier. It was super weird and kind of creepy, but that's about it. Nothing like it has ever happened again, 
and I've only read a few stories that were kind of similar, but not quite the same thing. Though, if anyone has ever had an experience like this or has a better explanation than The Matrix Glitched, I would love to hear it. I feel like this is difficult to explain properly in writing, or maybe it seems to lose something in translation. I was at work and decided to stop home for lunch. I also figured I would grab a few USB thumb drives because I needed one briefly at work for a file copy. My hardware at work was picky about detecting certain USB drives properly, so I thought, bring a few. As I grab four different size and age thumb drives, I immediately get an irrational fear that I'm going to lose the largest 512 gigabyte one that I just purchased a few weeks prior. I also had numerous files on it. I had to logically talk myself into bringing it. I'm not going to lose it, that's silly. I'll bring it to work, test it, and bring it back home a few hours later. I'll be at work just from lunch until 5pm anyways. I'd put the drive in a Ziploc bag to make sure I didn't misplace it. The part I can't explain properly is how weird of a feeling I got in deciding to bring the one drive. It made no sense. It was like an inner voice telling me that I would lose it. I went back to work, tried the first oldest USB drive from my bag, and it worked. I didn't need to test the other three. I copied my file, done. But I remained paranoid for some unknown reason about losing the one thumb drive, though. My desk at work is very clean. Not much clutter, if any at all. I kept the Ziploc bag of drives on my desk for the rest of the day. At the end of the day, I made sure that I had everything. I put the Ziploc bag in my jeans pocket and drove home. When I arrived home, I immediately went to my computer room to drop off the Ziploc bag of thumb drives and put them back with my other computer stuff. I take the bag out of my pocket and see that there are three thumb drives. Guess which one is somehow missing? It doesn't seem possible to me. Am I losing my mind or being pranked? It's nowhere. I've checked everywhere many times over. Although there are literally very few places to check, it's like it never existed. The drive barely, if at all, left my sight, let alone my Ziploc bag. I practically took my work area cubicle apart for it the next day, and there's nowhere for it to go, though. It's not in my pocket. It's like I knew I was going to lose that drive and was powerless to prevent it. No matter how much I focused on not losing it in a short time span. The whole thing is super weird. Today I reordered that thumb drive from Amazon. Does that mean that I'll find the original? I actually stared up at the sky at one point and yelled, Give me my drive back! I didn't know what else to do. I, I think the Matrix has it. This could be paranormal, but I believe it could also be a glitch of times past or something. So to set the scene, my mom was out of town for the weekend, and my daughter S was being watched by her grandpa. We all lived together. I came home from work and her bedroom door was closed. Grandpa said that S ran into her room saying that she thought she saw someone in our entryway library. She said, Oh, I think that's Grandma, my mom, and then ran away and closed the door behind her. I opened the door and she seemed happy and fine, happy to see me. So, we eat dinner and then clean up afterwards. Grandpa comes in from taking out the trash and asks, Did you put your Amazon package on the little table by the door inside? I hadn't. I hadn't even been that way as... I've always come in through the other door, and I would have brought it in with me, 
not left it on the little table. Grandpa had not set foot outside before taking out the trash. He's not put it there either. And he says he doesn't remember it being there before. It was also a place that neither him nor anybody else would really set it. S was being watched by either Grandpa or myself, except for when she was in her room with the door closed briefly, which is clear on the other side of the house. We were both getting pretty uneasy. How could it have gotten there? We think logically. Maybe my mom put it there before she left. Maybe the Amazon person was totally weird and snuck it inside somehow. I check Amazon to see what they have to say about the order, and they have a picture of it right outside the door on the outdoor table that they usually leave them on. They said it was delivered at 4.58pm, way after my mom had left. That was right about when Grandpa and S were in the kitchen making dinner, which has a clear enough view and is right in front of the front door. They definitely would have seen it open. It's a noisy old door with one of those insulation things at the bottom, and it's not a very big house. Really, if the door was opened in any room, you could hear it. This is what creeps me out the most, though. After S and I were alone, she told me that it wasn't Grandma in the library that she saw. It was a blurry man. She said, translated from a four-year-old, that the blurry man started off in the kitchen. She says he was at the stove, uh, cooking, but is really not sure what he was doing there. Then he drifted through the opening into the library. He went to go read a book. Then she had sort of an epiphany and was like, Oh yeah, he stole that book. She didn't realize this before, I guess. And then said that he vanished. So what do you all think this could be? I'm really just not sure what to make of it. So, posting here again. Usually, I have little glitches that could be passed off as coincidence. But today, it was just too weird to not notice. Obligatory posting from phones, so... Sorry if any formatting problems and the like. Okay, so here we go. I live in a fairly popular UK coastal city. It being Sunday and super sunny, it was pretty busy. So the fiancé, 29 female, and I, 29 male, decided to go and be tourists for the day. The first glitch happened shortly after we left the house. I notice a random skateboarder ollie, jump for those non-skaters, and fall off in a very specific way. This in itself wasn't weird. We walked to the beach, and along the promenade the exact same skater does an ollie, and falls off the exact same way. Same clothes, same hair. I didn't think anything of it. It totally could have been the same guy who had skated to the same spot that we were in. Then, two events happened side by side about ten minutes later. We had gone on to the pier to just have a wander. We reached the end of the pier where they have lots of rides. I see a woman in a very unique floral dress who walks past us. We start walking down the pier towards land and the exact same woman walks past us towards the rides, coming the opposite direction to us walking. Now, there's definitely no way that she could have walked that far down and back, because she would have had to have walked past us, and it was a very noticeable dress. Now, my interest is piqued. We stop at a donut stand... There is a lady serving, but she's using an automatic machine that drops dough into a fryer and then flips it, and then dumps it out at the end of a conveyor belt. We bought five. I watched the woman put five in the fryer. We even joked with the lady about how people are always so mesmerized by the machine, because we were watching it so intently. She bags up the five donuts, with us both still watching her, 
And when we exit the pier and are eating our donuts, there are six in the bag. They're all the same scalding temperature, which makes me think she didn't just chuck an extra one in. She was making them to order. Are we going crazy? The three events on their own are weird enough, but to have them all consecutively is what's done it for me. This isn't the first time that things have appeared out of nowhere, especially in my kitchen area. I figured it might be a rat or mice placing them there, so I ignored it for the first few occurrences. The first time it happened was maybe months ago. Whenever I'm in the kitchen, I often find tiny objects on the countertop like nails, broken zippers, that small key that you use to open canned goods, and other small metal pieces that look like part of some other object. But last night was the weirdest one so far. While I was fixing a meal, I found this strange red box about the size of a book that's like magnetic at the front so it seals shut. It contained eight rectangular glass prisms that has some sort of animal inside each one, and one small toy that looks like a samurai figure about the size of a Lego. I've never seen this thing before. Honestly, it looks like something that a kid would keep. It was perfectly placed on top of my condiments rack, so I thought to myself, maybe it fell from the top shelf since I never have looked in that area before. But the thing is, it seemed kind of new, and no dust was accumulated on top of it or whatsoever, so that couldn't be possible. Another possibility was that it was a cat who did it since there's a small hole on the kitchen roof that it could fit through due to this house being renovated long ago, but they never got around to finishing it. That theory was quickly debunked as there's no traces of bite marks or anything on the box. Also, a cat's mouth wouldn't be able to grasp onto an object of that size, and the box itself cannot fit through that hole. Just this morning again, I'm baffled to find a floor mat placed messily on my bathroom floor near the toilet bowl. Now I'm really freaked out. For some context, I live alone. This place is not rented, so landlords are out of the question, it was actually my grandfather's old house and was just passed on to me since I figured I'll be able to save a lot instead of paying for rent. The friends and family do not have a spare key. Last time someone came by was weeks ago and I often clean the house so I should have noticed it by that time. If the neighbor's kids sneaked in, I would have known right away because I have two dogs and they would have alerted me that somehow someone else was in the house. I let them stay in the garage area, and the front door is always closed as well, so it wouldn't be them who brought in the floor rag, and the box was placed somewhere that they wouldn't be able to reach. I also work from home and rarely leave the house, so it's unlikely a burglar had gotten in. If it was even a burglar, because why would they just leave something behind instead of taking something? I checked my valuables, and they're all still there. I don't sleepwalk as far as I know, because I have this watch where it tracks your sleep and the time that you wake up. Sleep pattern is straight too. At first I thought I was just being hexed or something, but later realized it might be a glitch that I'm experiencing. Can someone tell me what's actually going on? Am I just being paranoid or something? I'm thinking of getting a motion sensor or a camera set up when something pops up again. This was December 31st, 2018. I wanted to go out for the New Year's, but didn't want to make it a late night. Also, I would like to mention that this was my first New Year's living in Mountain Time, a time zone that is not Eastern Standard that I was used to. 
in my New Year's past, I watched the ball drop in New York City in real time, even if it was just on TV. So, I decided to attend a party where everyone wanted to keep it an early night. It was agreed we would watch the New York ball drop at 10pm our time, which would be midnight New York time. I only had two to three alcoholic beverages throughout the night, and I was in no way intoxicated. My boyfriend who was with me was also sober, as well as several others at the party. So those of us who were sober kept an eye out on the clock and turned on the TV to the New York simulcast around 9.45 to 9.50 p.m. It was commercial time. When the program returned, we saw Times Square in New York City. It seemed like it was taking a long time for them to check the countdown clock for the ball drop. We checked the clocks on our phones to make sure we had the right time, that we weren't looking too early or too late. 9.55 p.m. quickly approached as we were still trying to figure out what was happening. Suddenly, we realized the ball had dropped already. We kept watching in denial that we missed it. At 11.59 p.m., Ryan Seacrest appeared on the screen and thanked us all for watching. The camera panned around a crowded, confetti-strewn street. Credits rolled and a new program popped up. We were befuddled, but kind of just dismissed it. I even googled it the next day to see if there was some explanation. I asked around if anyone else noticed this or could explain what happened, but nobody understood or had any answers. As we enter the new year and a new decade, those memories came back to me more vivid than ever. I asked my boyfriend and anyone who was at the party if they remembered this happening, those who were drinking remember very little detail, of course. However, my boyfriend, the party hostess, and I all remember. I think that we were the only ones sober, and were still befuddled. I decided I would share this here at this time, hoping to find some explanation, or someone else who experienced this. All I can come up with is that we experienced a glitch where we time jumped or lost time, it feels as though at least 10 minutes just vanished, causing our early new year to start even earlier than we planned. So this was the 100th collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. Around an hour of brand new stories for you all. Really good stuff, really weird stuff. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. I plan to record it over the weekend, and then guess who didn't uh, do that? Um, me, as a matter of fact. Anyways, uh, really good stuff. I loved it. Uh, really good time. So crazy to think that I've done 100 volumes of Glitch in the Matrix stories. That means that... I think there was one week I did two in a row, uh, way, way, way back. But that means we're at about two years worth of glitch stories, which, that's a long time. It's a lot of stories. I don't know how many I've done over the times, but it's a lot, so. Thank you all so very much for being amazing people and listening to these stories. I hope you know how much it genuinely means to me to have all of you here and to have all of you just, just enjoying these. It is huge for me. The success of this channel is a huge thing for me. And yeah, thank you to each and every single one of you. So, usual spiel to follow. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you want, you can leave me a comment with the word of the week, which we'll get to that in a minute. If you want to support further, there's the thanks option. Or through Patreon or joining memberships, you can get early access to content like this. Now, as I stated, Word of the Week, let's get to that. Last week's Word of the Week was share, and so, so many of you shared your comments with me. Thank you. On the screen right now, and prior to right now, is a collection of all the comments I received with the word share. So very many of you are amazing people and are willing to take the time to leave these comments. So thank you. 
each and every single one of you. Please keep at it. Please keep going. Anyways, now, this week's Word of the Week is one that I truly enjoy. It's truly. (laughs) T-R-U-L-Y. Which means, sincerely or genuinely, truthfully or accurately, indeed or properly. I just hit my mic. Hopefully you guys don't hear that. You probably will, though. So, basically, like, this is a word that I truly enjoy. So it's one I sincerely enjoy. You guys get the deal. You know what truly means, right? I think you do. So yeah, leave me a comment with the word truly, and you'll see it next week on the screen. Promise you that. All right, friends. This video has gone on long enough, and I hope that you're all having a beautiful day and a wonderful week, and I hope that I do see you on the next video, my friends. But until that day happens, sleep well.